as well. Yeah, and um, was there was there um, in in Olympic sport? It's so it's a bit different from again the sport we played cricket because it's skill based. So the physicality element of it comes um, is sort of like is, is to a lesser extent. You could be very skillful in the sport that we play mm. but the physicality yep. element may not be there mm. but your skill is what you're judged on and how you get paid and you play and you do well and whatever yeah. but in I remember again when I went into swimming uh, it was like yes there's a skill element and technical element but mm. if you are physically not as good as the person in the lane next to you you will mm. lose like mm. you will definitely lose when you go into uh, an Olympics and you have a variety I think it's a great example there's a variety mm. of athletes again predominantly Predominantly, the, ba- the the basis of the of the sports are that you're judged on your physical ability to yes. get from A to B. Speed, endurance, power. Yeah. Totally. So, yeah. how much of the how much do you believe of them achieving? Let's say Sydney, for example. Yeah. You've got the pressure of a home Olympics. You've got the expectation of a nation to do well as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got you've trained well for four years, but that last little bit getting on the podium there's been examples of athletes that have been mm. world record holders but they get into a finals and yeah not done how do you how do you how did you do that in sydney how did you sort of deal with what was the the mm. way you went about dealing with that expectation and pressure that they were going to go under um oh, gee there's there's so many answers to that but yeah. in some ways the the issue is giving each of the coaches ownership of their own program um, and then trying to create the, I, mean, I often describe it as it's a bit like a shopping mall and, and the Australian Olympic Committee, and the Australian Olympic team are creating the shopping mall. And in that shopping mall, you're going to bring 27 franchise businesses. Um, now, those franchises range from yachting teams uh, that might be millionaire um, yachtsmen that travel all over the world. Uh, they might be 15-year-old gymnasts. Um, they might be... Um, amateur weightlifters, they might be superstar swimmers. Um, there's just a massive mix. So um, I guess what we always knew with that was that um, you needed to create an environment where they could focus and, and be confident in what they could do. Because the it's a concept called reversal theory in psychology that basically means um, that I can handle a fairly high level of intensity and what would perceive to be pressure as long as my perception is that this is positive for me and that it's exciting. Um, On the other hand, as soon as I start interpreting what happens to me as being out of control um, and being negative and threatening, then the level that I can handle will will cause my performance to drop really quickly. So it's called reversal theory for that. If you look at it on a graph, you've either got this continuing increased performance or you get this really quick dive. Right. So what you're endeavoring to do from a psych perspective is say, okay, so how do we create the environment in which our athletes feel in control? Um, Now, sometimes that's really simple things like what, what would take them out of control? Uh, the media would take them out of control because it can create the narrative that you don't want. Yeah. Okay, so so one of the things we did with the teams was we had journalists, so, so accredited journalists, who to, who were um, engaged by the Australian Olympic team to act as media liaison people. So they were like swimming had a full time one. Um, the smaller sports would have other smaller groups. So the media are. Um, they're, they're important to the athletes because it's sponsorship and it's cred and it's mm-hmm. reputation and yeah. publicity and yeah. so on. It's a big but moment also, for them. Yeah, but it's also a massive distractive. It takes them into that feeling out of control area. So that's an element. Another one is things like information. So um, so the bus is going to leave. Where do I get my food? How do I do this? Are my parents going to have tickets? There's all those sorts of things that will potentially just add to that level of anxiety, pushes them over the edge again. So a lot of our... Um, a lot of our shopping mall analogy is to create the environment where the athletes come in and every 30 seconds, if they want to, they can find out whether the buses are on time, um, et cetera. Um, you also then build in yeah, things like team barbecues, um, rituals that you know. So you're looking going, as a psych, you're always going, where are the impediments? If that's an impediment, like eating too much food is an impediment in, the, in a village, being distracted by discos and all sorts of other um, athletes who are in the best physical shape of their life as well. These are all distractions, mm-hmm. particularly when you're tapering. So how do you build in the the activities and the, the daily structures and so on that you need? So 
that's the sort of level we're focusing at, not the how do I get Lewis to perform better in that situation. Because yeah. the coach knows that Lewis has got there because he's already performed well and he's yeah. already done it at a Worlds. Um, so the question is, can we make that environment one in which that coach can have that athlete? So, uh, and maybe a simple example of it is, you know, one of the things you find with athletes at their first experience in Olympic Village is they get quite, many of them get intimidated uh, just by walking through the village. Um, the conversation with a psychologist normally goes something like, um, how did you feel walking down there earlier? Oh, n- not really like I don't fit. Okay, what, do, what caused you, what did you see when you were having that thought? Oh, some, some US basketballers. Okay, and then after that, what? Oh, well, I walked into the, vill- to the meal. Okay, what did you see then? Oh, some Tongan weightlifters. You go, okay, the last time I looked, you were a swimmer. <laughs> Um, are you competing against the basketballers? No. Yeah. Are you competing against them? No. Okay. So let's dial this back a bit. So even then, it's like, well, I don't want you out walking in the village by yourself because if you are walking in front of the American team, they will walk straight through you. That is just part of their game plan. Yeah. Um, so it just, I know it all sounds very simple and silly, yeah. but you're just trying, back to reversal theory, if I can get Lewis to go into that environment feeling it's exciting, feeling this is the opportunity of his life and he just wants to go out there and give it the best shot he can, he's going to do fine. If yeah. on the other hand, he's going out there feeling like, oh God, this is threatening and I'm feeling, a, you know, I'm not sure and I'm tentative and so on, then he's... he's-